Hi everybody, in this video I'm doing a review on the Sharpworks Whetstone Guided Knife Sharpener. are going to get into the Sharpworks knife sharpener. This is a guided sharpener by Sharpwork that allows you to do whetstone sharpening that's guided, meaning you don't have to worry about freehand and not getting the exact angle. So for those of you that like whetstones or want to get into whetstone sharpening, which I think is absolutely a great way to go to learn the basics on sharpening, the Sharpworks guided sharpener really allows you to achieve that with success. Now out of the box, the Sharpworks comes with a 20 degree angled sharpener. That is standard that comes with the box. You cannot adjust that. And it comes with the actual base and the hinge area to allow you to take your knife and move it across the whetstone. I was actually sent the adjustable additional piece that you get for an additional fee. This lets you adjust it between zero and 30 degrees, which will cover all your knife ranges from EDC carries, pocket knives, all the way down to your Japanese knives at 12 degrees. Now, the one thing about this, it holds a standard whetstone. It is provided with a 400 and a 1000 grit whetstone, which is nice in, inside the uh, package. You wanna go ahead and soak your whetstone for about 15, 20 minutes. You do it a lot, little longer, that's fine. This has been soaking for a while. And we're gonna start with a 400, 400, 1000. I'm gonna put that in the sharpener like so. It's got a holder base you can see right here that um, typically I would have it on and just soak it with this, but I had it off so you can see the stone. Put that in here, it holds it securely. This will hold any standard whetstone size, and it allows you to start sharpening on top of this stone. Now, with the 20 degree, you basically just put it in the adjustment angle, and we're gonna show you how that works here real quick. Slide this in, put your knife on. There's a magnetic piece, very strong neodymium flat magnet that goes on here. And if you look at my other videos, I comment a lot about magnets and their insufficiency. This magnet is very strong. This comes with a small knife sharpener adapter that you can put on here as well. If you have a small knife that you know is 20 degrees, that just slides on like so. But in most cases for a standard knife, you're gonna go in just to fix your blade into the magnetic section. And it is, I mean, it's really strong. It's not, it's not coming off or going anywhere. And you would then take this, place this on the stone, and you would then start your whetstone sharpening. Now, these knives I have, I've sharpened to 17 degrees. So having the 20 degree sharpener, I have a decision. Take it to 20 degrees or I wanna stay with 17. And in this case, I wanted 17. So Sharpworks sent me their adjustable holder that goes with this kit. And it comes with a rod for itself, the magnet, which holds anything on there. And it lets you adjust the knife on the side. To adjust the knife, you're gonna go ahead and unscrew these. Very easy to do by hand. And you're gonna move this plate back and forth. You can see this right here. There's the plastic adjustment, and this changes the angle from your zero degrees all the way down to 30 degrees. So we're gonna set this at 17 degrees again, and it's clearly marked on the side, zero to 30. There are 10 degree increments. So I'm gonna set this right between the 15 and the 20. Tighten this up like so. Hand tightens all you gotta do. It'll keep it in place, no problem. And now we're at 17 degrees, double checking, perfect. We're gonna go ahead and place this device, which comes in the box. This is the hinge that slides over this rod that is placed inside of the sharpener, very simple. And then you bring this up and then you would secure this to make sure that this is level. This rod goes through the opening on the other side of the sharpener and it's, it's buttery smooth, very smooth. And you're ready to sharpen at the 17 degrees. One of the things that came up in my testing is how do I know this is level? Because in order to use this at the 17 degree mark, you have to level this 
versus being up or down. You want to have it level. The nice thing is if you have a bigger stone, you can raise it up. If you end up getting a smaller stone, you can bring it down like so. So it's really nice that it has that adjustability. However, to keep it level, I'm not really sure. So how do you do it? It's really simple. You can pick one of these up. It's in my Amazon store, or you can use a regular level around your house. You don't need this. You can actually sharpen it very efficiently by eyeballing it, loosen this up, check it out. It looks pretty level and you'll probably be good to go. But I like precision and to be precise, I'm gonna use my angle guide. This is a Klein. And in order to do this correctly, you wanna place it on the stone first. So place it on the stone, like so. It's showing basically a 0.1 degree. This is 0.3 degrees, but we're going this way. So I care about the slope this way. We're point, point 0.1, which is basically level. And I'm putting my knife on with the holder. And again, this magnetic adjusts. So we're gonna adjust this plate all the way back, exposing the front part of this magnet here, okay? You'll know it's wrong, because if you push this forward and do it, it won't stick. So you can't really screw it up. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten these up. And now we're ready to put our knife on. And you can see that grabbed it really quick. And it's, I mean, it's really hard to get off. So I just angle it back here along the edge, set it down, and you're ready to go, turn it over. And now you can start your whetstone sharpening, making sure your stone stays wet. So we're gonna add some water onto here. I put a towel down below. And if it's sitting for too long, you'll see it kind of soaking up that water. That's fine. We're just gonna put some more water on here, get it nice and wet, and we're gonna start our sharpening. But before we start our sharpening, let's go ahead and do a best test and see what this knife looks like now. We'll do our sharpening and see what it looks like when we're done with the 400 and the 1000 grit. And then I always finish it off with a strop. Now you'll see in my videos, I use the best tester. This is by Sharp Electronics. It's how I test all my knives. There is a filament that goes in here and I go into detail on this in my other videos so I won't spend time. We're gonna put this in and do a test. This measures the gram pressure on the knife and will let us see what this knife is when it comes to sharpness. Above 2000, you're at a butter knife. Down in the 50 range, you're at a double-edged razor. So we're gonna test this to see where we're at. So we're gonna start out by tearing this out and we'll see where we're at. I wanna test in the middle of the blade just for a good uh, you know, reference. You set this in and we're gonna go ahead and push this down slowly and we're gonna see what this reads. So we're at a 300, 300. 300 on the best scale is actually factory sharpness. Most knives you get from a factory, well between 300 and 350 on the best scale. Now to sharpen our knife, we're gonna put some water on this, keep it wet, we're gonna start with a 400 stone. We're gonna basically take this, put it on the stone and normally you'd have to have your hands holding that perfect angle moving this back and forth. And if you're off at all, you one, may never get a sharp knife because you may be changing the angle, which actually makes it dull. And then second of all, it may take you a lot longer because while you get it sharp, you may unsharpen it, resharpen it again. You're not really sure. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of confidence. I was not confident when I started doing the whetstone. I screwed up a bunch of knives doing it just freehand. And I wish I would have had something like this to guide me. I do know that I've used this quite a bit now. And after using this, I know and I can feel where I'm supposed to be for this. And I can use the whole length of stone. And because this is holding it at the perfect angle, I don't have to think about it and just run it across the stone. As you can see, this pivots. You should just rest it. You don't need to press very hard on this and just run it back and forth. And this is keeping the perfect angle through the sharpening process. I don't have to look at what I'm doing. It actually just does it for me. And now we're gonna go ahead and flip it over, okay? I wanna see if there's a burr. And if I feel this with my, my finger, it actually started a burr, if you can hear this. That's my, that's my nail coming up the top. What I've done is I've caused the metal to roll over slightly as we're sharpening that edge, and now there's a burr along that side. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this over, and we wanna take that burr off, and we wanna sharpen it the same amount of times this way to even that off. So it's good to count what you're doing. You don't wanna do like 100 sides on one, and. 40 on the other and then flip it over, you'll get an uneven uh, apex on that. So with this, I'm gonna add a little bit more water. And I got that slurry on there. We're gonna go ahead and basically now do this side. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and clean this off real quick. And then we're gonna go ahead and flip this over and we're gonna do the 1000 side. You can see we've got a lot of that steel coming off here. This Damascus steel. we will go ahead and take this now. We're gonna turn this over. I always like giving it just a little dip. Clean it off, and now we're ready to go with the 1000. This is gonna be a lot less abrasive. It's gonna feel uh, a lot smoother with this. Uh, a lot of people make you know comments about you should learn muscle memory and 
you know, that's what it's all about. You know, whatever works for you is what I say you should do. So, and this works really well. And we're gonna go ahead and put this on here like so. And we're gonna go ahead and now do this side here. Let's see if we got below 300 and how far we got next. Tear it out and we're going for lower than 300. Zero it out, here we go. One forty-four. Right. It's below two hundred, so we brought it down in a very short amount of time. That is a utility razor blade. More than enough for your kitchen. I did get to ninety-seven at one point in one of these areas. So obviously, this knife when I started may not have been even, and I've only spent maybe ten minutes on this knife. Check out my links below. Check out my Amazon store for everything I have that I use that's for sale in the Amazon store. If it's in there, that means that I bought it or I've used it in a review and I love it and I still use it. If I don't use it anymore, I take it out of the store because I want to be able to converse with people on the products, how I use them, and if they have any questions. And before I say my goodbyes to my paper cutting, paper loving viewers, here you go. I get real thin. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Smoke on, baby.